Greetings friends and welcome to this week's tactics video. We know Blood Angels have a few ways to fight first in 40k so I'm going to tell you the best ways you can do this and how you can use this to win games. Let's talk about all the different options and just how strong they are. Let's get straight into this video. So welcome to the weekly tactics video. If we are just meeting my name is John and we're here every week to give you advice and help you win games in Warhammer 40,000. As we know, Blood Angel has basically got three different choices when it comes to fight first. They are the Sanguinor, who is kind of amazing in that he can appear anywhere in the battlefield. We're going to break down each of these units and then I'm going to give you raw damage values on just how effective they are into all the problematic targets that are going to charge us. We've got the Judas Yar. I think it's best if he leads Bladeguard Veterans. That is a deadly unit. As I say, we've got all the numbers, we're going to come into that. And then we've got Mephiston, who can lead Assault Intercessors. These are the best choices for those units. Mephiston does have some amazing abilities with this Transfixing Glare, able to take the enemy's weapon skill and the number of attacks they have down. So let's break down why each of these choices are strong and how you can use them the best way on the battlefield. But right before we do that, let me tell you real quick about this week's sponsor. So I've been wearing Into the AM and modeling it great, must say, for a couple of weeks now. I love all the different t-shirt designs. The ones that I got, the sizing is so good and they're so comfortable. Honestly, I just want to wear them every day. They're that comfortable. That's a legit 100%. I really have my eyes on this orange flannel shirt because obviously that's after my favorite football team. But I actually love the one that I, I got. I've literally worn it every day since it arrived. So check them out. There'll be a link in the video description. 10% off your next order using BAC10. Thanks so much. I'll link that again at the end of this video. So the Sanguiner then, why is he good? He obviously arrives in the, anywhere in the board, in turn two or three, in the engagement range of an enemy that's made a charge. He can do that and then he can make his eight attacks with weapon skill two up, strength six minus three, two damage and dev wounds. The interesting thing that you have to remember is he can be placed in very awkward positions for the enemies to deal with. Remember, enemy models in the close combat phase have to move towards the closest enemy model. So if the enemy had a bit of a strung out squad that was charging into a unit, if you place him in the very back of the unit, you might actually make it very difficult for the enemy to put all their attacks into who they need to attack because they're going to have to split their attacks between the Sanguinor. Maybe some guys in the middle can't even fight because they've got to keep coherency. So the Sanguinor, once you've played him a few times and figured out how to play some awkward for your enemy, then he is potentially very good. He also is going to synergize with that Angel Sacrifice 1 CP strat, which means if the enemy does manage to kill him, then any other attacks for the rest of the game, if you pay 1 CP against that unit, you'll be able to re-roll the hits from Angel Sacrifice play. So the Sanguinar, although he's expensive at 140 points, a lot of top lists are taking him. He is very, very useful. We also want to talk about the Judiciar. I think he's got a very solid combat profile now at five attacks. He's got precision and dev wounds and also basically that gives you some character killing because he's probably going to be attached to those blade guard, which means you'll hit on twos, re-rolling ones, strength seven minus two, two damage, dev wounds, precision can one turn kill a character pretty effectively. He's a fairly cheap upgrade and he's only 70 points. And I think he benefits amazingly from both blade guard and, uh, buffs that you can potentially give the blade guard because you can potentially give them reroll ones to hit you can potentially give them reroll ones on their invulnerable save he will benefit from both of those while he's attached to the unit he is very good and him plus six blade guard is actually 250 points it's kind of cheap for essentially 22 wounds and everybody has a four up in bun yes he doesn't have a four up in bun in shooting but usually if he's shooting everybody else is dead so it's kind of mute point um the blade guard yep i said they have a reroll ones to hit potentially a reroll ones to save uh, six man unit gets charged. You're still going to get 24 attacks from the blade guard. That's strength five minus two, two damage. Reroll ones if you activate sword of the chapter. So that's a 77% chance hit. So basically what that means, if the enemy charges your blade guard and they have fight first, they're going to take 18.5 hits. Obviously you still have to roll to wound, but 18.5 hits at strength five minus two, two damage. That's going to do some damage. And I've done the math later and wait till you see how much damage that does against some of these problem units. Um, it's kind of... It's kind of a big deal. It's why I run Judasar and Bladeguard in pretty much every game at the moment. And then the third choice, I guess, would be Mephiston. His Transfixing Gaze is amazing if you roll a 6. I think most of the time it's average and it reduces your opponent's weapon skill by 1. I mean, that's not bad. But if you roll a 6, it's amazing because it reduces the weapon skill by 1 and their attacks by 1. So if the enemy maybe has a really powerful squad that only have like 3 attacks, then you're basically stealing 33% of their damage output 
and you're minusing one to the weapon skill, which could be another. So he can he can almost debuff some units, like uh, Wraithblade are a good example. He could debuff their damage output by almost 50%. Uh, so he can be amazing. He's no slouch in combat either with his strength 9 minus 3 D3 uh, sword. And he obviously benefits from the shock assault rule that the assault intercessors have, which basically means that they reroll once to wound. That helps a lot with the sword. And um, they also reroll all wounds on objectives. So when charged, nine of these guys would do 36 strength 4 minus 1 1 damage chain swords, a few power fist attacks, and then they can reroll wounds on ones or full rerolls on an objective. And these guys could synergize with Oath of Moment. And if you knew you were going to be charged by a specific unit, you could Oath of Moment them. But I think that's actually quite hard to do. So that's the three options. Um, I've told you which option I'm running, and by the end of the video, I, I really want you to choose one of these options and get it into your army list. Um, and my bias is completely irrelevant. You choose what you think is best for you. I think the general Blood Angels community think the Sanguinor is by far the best choice. Um, I think he's a strong choice, but do you know what? He's just not for me, and that's fine. Maybe he is for you. So, if you get some value out of today's video, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel. I am here every week. I'm trying to do as best content as I can produce. And behind my head right there, there is a bell icon. If you want to be notified every time I go live or every time I put a new tactics video out, you need to click the bell and change your notifications to all. Otherwise, YouTube won't tell you. So consider subscribing, consider supporting the channel. I do really appreciate it. Please boot the like button. Okay, let's talk about the Sanguine Art. And what we've done is we've looked at Incubi. Corn Berserkers, Plague Marines, Grey Knight Terminators, and 8 Bound. All of these units charging into Blood Angels is probably going to end up with a bunch of dead Blood Angels, right? But, if we fight first. So, I've actually just taken the profile of the Sanguinar, his strength 8, sorry, his 8 attacks, his strength 6, his minus 3, his 2 damage, his dev wounds, and I've just rolled it, basically, through my spreadsheet against all these different guys. So, if the Sanguinar heroically intervened, from reserve and fought first. Uh, against Incubi, he kills four Incubi. Against Berserkers, he kills three Berserkers. Against Plague Marines, he kills three Plague Marines. Against Grey Knight Terminators, he kills one of them. And against Eight Bound, he kills one of them. So, pretty useful model to have around. Maybe not so useful against, you know, reasonably high toughness infantry with Invan saves because he loses some of his AP. But overall, pretty useful model to have around. Let's look at the Blade Guard into the exact same targets. Well, if you get charged by Incubi, the Judas Yard will kill three of them, the Blade Guard will kill eight. So that's 11 Incubi, that's pretty much the whole squad, right? If you get charged by Berserkers, the Judas Yard will kill two, the Blade Guard will kill eight, that's 10 Berserkers. If you get charged by Plague Marines, which are a big problem at the moment because they can be attached by the Biologist, Putrefire, and the Foul Bite Spawn to make them both fight first and have lethal hits on fives and sixes, well, we kill eight of them with the squad if they charge us. That's kind of insanity. That, and statistically, it might actually be nine because I put the actual number of failed saves together. So, if you rolled a little bit low in the Judiciar, tiny bit high in the Blade Guard, you're killing nine. Yeah, that's insane. And then, do you know what? I played this exact squad into Grey Knight Terminators just a few weeks ago. And when I played it on the tabletop, this is precisely what happened. I killed, I was charged by five Grey Knight Terminators led by a character. I killed three of them. Then all of a sudden, three Grey Knight Terminators into my Blade Guard with all my four of Invan saves. I'm not so scared anymore, right? Like, if I've got so that seven guys left and he's only got three... I'm feeling pretty good about it, and I did feel, and I mean, I did beat Grey Knights a few weeks back, that did help a lot, that Blade Guard, and then even into 8 Bound, we're going to kill 3 8 Bound, 8 Bound are very expensive, they are obviously very deadly, usually when 8 Bound charge Space Marines, you just have to lift off the Space Marines, they've got so many attacks, they've got so high strength, uh, I think they're all, a bunch of them are 2 damage, maybe the Chain Glaive is 1 damage, but, um, Killing three eight bound. They come in pretty small squads usually. You probably sometimes um I'm sure I fought against some squads of just three or four. So maybe we're even killing the whole squad with the Judas Yar and Blade Guard veterans. These guys are legitly good, even though there's no stratagem that you can play on these guys to make them better because you can't get Lance because they didn't charge. Their base profile is doing a lot of damage. Let's talk about the Salt Intercessors and Mephiston. Against the Incubi, I guess because these are one damage weapons for the most part for the salt chain swords, we kill a boatload of them. That's the most out of all three of these squads. We killed 16. Against the Berserkers, we still kill 10. Mephiston's doing a fair bit of work here. And I did include the reroll ones, but not the reroll full wounds. So this is including reroll ones to wound. 
Against Plague Marines, we kill the same number, eight. I've actually factored the Power Fist into this final column as well. That's why we don't have the number of failed saves. So I am including the damage done by the one Power Fist and the nine Chain Swords. Against Grey Knight Terminators, we kill the exact same, three. And against the eight bound, we kill the exact same, three. So, let's look at the comparison then. You know, when the Sanguara comes in against Incubi, it's four. The Judas are in that 11, Mephisto 16. Against the Berserkers, it's 3 10 10. Against the Plague Marines, it's 3 8 8. Against the Terminators in the 8 bound, it's 1 3 3. So, my thought is yes, there's no denying the Sanguinor coming in anywhere in the battlefield is super powerful. But let's not count out the Judas Yar with the 6 Blade Guard or the Mephiston with the Assault Intercessors because, for the most part, I would say if you were being charged, like, these two units are unchargeable by all these units, right? Like, no one's going to charge you if they're going to lose 11 or 16 Incubi. So, arguably, they're just unchargeable. Uh, against Berserkers or Plague Marines, again, they're arguably unchargeable. But you can't... <laughs> what are you going to do? What, how much damage are you doing when you've lost 10 Corn Berserkers or, or 8 Plague Marines? Um, and against Grey Knights and 8 Bound, I guess they are chargeable, and this isn't just Grey Knight Terminators, this is any Terminators, right? Um, they are chargeable, but chargeable where you lose 50% of your squad before you get to fight. I think most people, at least in my brain, if I look at the tabletop and I am going to make a charge where I lose 50% of my squad before I fight, the only way I'm doing that probably is if I've got 2 CP to fight on death, or I'm in a super desperate situation where I just needed to remove that enemy unit and I'm willing to take some losses. I think this is going to be super hard to deal with. Uh, I didn't realise these numbers were quite so high, so I'm glad that I worked them out. Um, and this sort of has me feeling that my call of including that 6 squad of Judiciar plus the Blade Guard... Yeah, 6 squad of Judiciar, yeah, no. 6 Blade Guard plus the Judiciar, 6 Judiciar would be insane. Uh, going in the Land Raider, getting to the middle of the board every game and maybe just trying to hold an objective in a difficult place on the board. Because my experience with Blade Guard in cover tells me that they are very, very survivable. They can be Armor of Contempted if you want to make them even more obnoxious. And they're four up in Van with three wounds. It's a pretty good break point for keeping models alive. I really like these guys. But, my opinion. So let's talk about a bit of a conclusion here. Let me make myself bigger so I don't obscure too much text. Um, so, the Sanguinar excels against units with no invan save. He's expensive, but he can be mega annoying, right? Just remember, you can set him up anywhere in engagement range. In the rules in 10th edition, enemies must move towards the closest model. So place him to prevent your enemy either putting all their attacks into the Sanguinar or putting all their attacks into the, your squad or just make things super difficult and awkward for them. Like, he can be anywhere in engagement range. And that's probably the super difficult, awkward thing is the, is what you want to do. So they maybe they were going to wipe a squad of your guys. Now they have to put half the attacks into the squad, half the attacks into the Sanguinar, or maybe they can't kill either of them, and then you can retaliate. And bear in mind, the Sanguinar will strike first as well. So when he comes in, if he kills a few, and they're already a bit strung out, it could be obnoxious for the enemies to deal with. So that's why people love him. Turn one and... Sorry, turn two and three are the turns he will arrive... And he doesn't make a unit as unchargeable as those other two units, but he does make things super awkward, and there's definitely value in that. And then afterwards, he is lone operative, so he can jump around and he can do actions. And if he does manage to charge, you know, he's no slouch on the charge. The new rules give him, like, uh, would it be nine attacks, two up hits, uh, strength eight minus three, two damage. So really powerful, and dev wounds in there as well. So really powerful from the Sanguinar. Other people might even pay 1cp when he arrives to basically precision out an enemy character. He could do that as well. He does have enough attacks probably to precision an enemy character to death. Uh, the Blade Guard and the Judas Yar deal a lot of damage. Toughness 5 Plague Marines. We kill 8 of them. I think that's borderline insane, right? Because Plague Marines are, especially with the two characters that they can attach at the moment, getting those lethal hits on fives and the fight first, make them sort of unchargeable for us, right? Like, you're not going to charge Plague Marines led by a Foul Blight spawn and the Biologist Putrefier. It's insanity. You would lose up. I imagine you could probably lose close to a 10-man score to Death Company. You can't do it. So, 
It's almost like a Mexican standoff. I had my Judas Yar Blade Guard, he couldn't charge me, uh, I couldn't charge him. And it made a big difference in the games that I've played. I've beaten Death Guard two or three times recently, and these Blade Guard are just, they're just always performing for me. And I guess that's why, when people charge them, they take so much damage. <laughs> Excuse me, I love this combo. Uh, and I guess I rate the damage output that they have from the fight first much higher than having a captain. I get having a captain with a blade guard means that I can save one strat one CP and I can do lethal hits and lance. But I think I'd rather just the Judiciar and be like, I'm just gonna stand on this objective. You have to charge me, and when you charge me, I'll do a lot of damage. And most of the time I feel like I've got one CP if I really needed to give the blade guard um red rampage. And you know what? I've done that in a bunch of my games. So I think I'm sort of in love with the Blade Guard and Judas CR. I won't be changing them. Uh, Mephisto Squad. They do a surprising amount of damage, considering it's just strength 4 minus 1 chain swords. Uh, even more so, they would do more damage if they were standing on an objective. So, arguably, they actually do the most damage. Um, they are the most expensive of the three choices. Sanguinar is 140, Blade Guard and Judas CR is like 250. Mephiston plus 10 Assault Intercessors is like 260, I believe. So it's 10 points more expensive. Um, we see a lot of people really um, put that Sanguary Priest with Assault Intercessors to give the extra AP, to give the 5 up, feel no pain. And and I guess they, they don't feel like they have the same durability as the Blade Guard, having all those uh, 4 up Storm Shield saves and the 3 wounds. But I guess if there is a situation where you're just looking to do the most damage on the fight first, it's actually Mephiston Squad, and I guess not many people would have thought that. Um, they really, yeah, nobody would have thought that until I did run the maths on it here. So, as always, brothers, I present you the Math Hammer. This is the Math Hammer. This is the breakdown. These are the numbers. I, my thought is, choose wisely. All three are good. I think there can only be one, though. Because these, these guys are kind of expensive. Maybe you could have a list where you have two fight first. I think you do get to a point in certain games where you have you have, you have more fight first than you need. Um, I think there can only be one. And I've told you my choice. But I think all three are super viable. Um, you need to choose what you want to do. You want to be awkward? You want to react anywhere in the board? Or you want to maybe dominate in the middle? Do a bunch of damage and be unchargeable? Totally up to you. So if you enjoyed this week's tactics video, please leave a like or subscribe. Remember, you can support me on Patreon for less than the price of a cup of coffee each month. Or you can click join on the video description and join us as a member here on YouTube. That does get you into our members only Discord room. I hope to see some of you guys there. If you don't want to do any of that and you just want to have a cool ass, nice into the AM shirt like me, then click the link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll catch you uh, on the next video. By the blood are we made strong. Peace.